Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> It was a long ride from Dodge up to Ponca Creek in the Dakota Territory. And I killed a good horse getting there. But I caught Lee Trumbo. He was asleep in a clump of willow, and I took him without a fight. We rode his horse double into Sioux Falls, but we came the rest of the way back to Dodge in style by stagecoach. At least I thought we were traveling in style. Lee didn't seem to care much for it. In fact, he wouldn't even talk until the stage pulled into Dodge and drove up Front Street toward the plaza. You're making a bad mistake, Marshal. Is that so? I didn't kill anybody. There are two witnesses say you did, Lee. They're lying. Then why did you run? My brother Dolph, he said you was after me. That's why I run. You'll get a trial. You can talk about it then. I ain't gonna stand trial, Marshal. Dolph will get me out of jail before that. Is that so? I never figured Dolph is a man to do much of anything. You've been against us Trumbos ever since we come to Dodge, ain't you, Marshal? Yeah, I have. Neither one of you is any good. See what I mean? Yeah, there's your brother Dolph now, waiting to oh. welcome you back. Oh. Well, how'd he know oh. I was coming? I wired Chester from Sioux Falls a week ago. Is that fanny oh, like a deputy of yours? His mail. Chester's not my deputy. Well, he sure acts like it. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? No. Nope. Here we are. You got my brother in there, Marshal? Come on out, Lee. You're going to be sorry for this. Yeah, that's what Lee's been telling me. Come on, Lee, get on out of there. I'm coming, Marshal, I'm coming. Shoot him, Dolph. Hey, hey, what? Don't look at me, Marshal. I didn't even draw. No. No, you didn't, did you, Dolph? You didn't have to kick him like that. You hurt him. He'll get his wind back. I got him covered, Mr. Dillon. Uh, hello, Chester. Don't you try nothing like that again, Lee. It's all right, Chester. The fight's out of him. You want me to take Dolph's gun? Now, that's funny. I keep forgetting. You do wear a gun, don't you, Dolph? There's nothing wrong with wearing a gun, Marshal? There is the way you wear one. What do you mean? Well, you might run into somebody who doesn't know you're afraid to use it, and he might shoot you before he found that out. You calling me a coward, Marshal? <laughs> now, Chester. Yes, sir? I'm going over to the office. When Lee here stops groaning, hurt him over and lock him up, will you? Okay, sir. And if Dolph gives you any trouble, shoot him. Now, nah, Marshal. Get going, Dolph. Go on, move. You'll be sorry for this. I'll make you sorry for it. Oh, say, there's a fellow waiting for you over at the office, Mr. Dillon. He's a stranger to me, but he wanted to see you. All right, Chester. Oh, by the way... Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. It's been most a month you've been gone. We sure did miss you here. Now, there were times when I missed being here, Chester. Uh, don't let Lee get away from you now, huh? 
I'd hate to make that ride all over again. No, sir, I won't. Oh, I sure won't. Oh, stop breathing like that, Lee, and get on your feet. You ain't hurt. Come on. Get up here. Let me alone. Well. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Hack. Hack Brian. How are you? Good to see you, Matt. <laughs> You're surprised to see me alive, huh, Matt? Why, Hack, it's been at least ten years, hasn't it? Man ain't born that could kill me. <laughs> Leastways, I ain't run into him yet. Well, maybe you're just lucky. <laughs> luckier than you, anyways. A lot luckier sometimes, the way I recall it. Now you're thinking about Santa Fe. Huh? Yeah. You wasn't very lucky that day, Matt. Hey, remember how it was? You backed into a corner with nothing but a beer bottle in your hand? And three of John Chisholm's drunk cowboys about to empty their guns into you. Yeah, yeah. And you walked in and killed every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> it was real surprised, wasn't it, Matt? Now, John Chisholm's been after you ever since, hasn't he, Hack? Oh, it was just the first of Chisholm's men I've killed, Matt. Been riding with Billy the Kid till about half a year ago. Oh? Well, why'd you quit? Never could make out if Billy was working for or against Chisholm. Besides, it didn't pay enough. Oh, but you're the one, Matt. <laughs> when I got to Dodge last night, heard you was U.S. Marshal here, I just didn't believe it. <laughs> well, being a Marshal isn't that hard a job. Oh, you can handle it, all right, I know that. What I mean is, is kind of sudden, find a man you used to know being a U.S. Marshal. Well, I got to earn my keep somehow. Oh, sure, sure. Well, what are you doing to Dodge, anyway? I don't know, Matt. I don't know yet. I've been over to Wagon Bed Springs, stretching my legs, sleeping in a bed, doing a little gambling and the like. Now, some fella here sent for me. I ain't seen him yet, but if it's a job he's got, I sure need the money. <laughs> well, good luck with it, Hack. We'll get together later and have a drink. Eh? Right, straight ahead, Lee. I see that door there. The is out What's back. this? Just a prisoner. What'd he do? I didn't do nothing. Shut up and keep walking, Lee. What you locking him up for, man? Murder? That's bad. That's real bad. Murder's always bad. I don't mean that. I mean locking a man up. I couldn't stand that, Matt. I never been in jail. I never ain't gonna be. <laughs> well, then you better stay sober around here, Hack. And you're taking it back about that drink. Oh, no. No. You'll be safe as long as you're with me. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, Matt. I've been around you when it wasn't so safe. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah, sure, Hack. Oh. Hey, well, come on in, mister. I'm leaving. So long, Matt. So long, Hack. Marshal Dillon? Uh, hello, Ole. How are you? Marshal, I got something I got to tell you. It's my duty the way I see it. Well, what's the trouble? Hello, Ole. What you doing here? Well, I come to tell the Marshal something, Chester, but I sure don't like informing on people. You understand me, Marshal? Well, what's it about, Ole? Dolph Trumbo, that's what. You got his brother Lee in jail here. We sure have. I just locked him up myself. Well, Dolph's coming to get him out. He's over at the Alifraganza right now talking it up. Talking what up? Well, there's some men at the bar there, Marshal. And Dolph's buying them drinks and telling them his brother's plum innocent and they got to raid the jail here and get him out. You mean he's forming a mob? That's what he's doing and I don't like it. There's going to be trouble, sure. Oh, Lee, thanks very much for telling me this, but uh, don't worry about the trouble. I'll put a stop to that right now. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. What a pair. What a buy. King-size Chesterfield. Now at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular. They're the quality twins. The same highest quality, the same low nicotine. Either way you like them, you get the same wonderful taste and mildness. A refreshing smoke every time. Change to Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. Yes, the Chesterfield you smoke today is the best cigarette ever made. What a pair. Chesterfield regular, Chesterfield king size. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. Who 
Wouldn't you know Dolph Trumbo would do something stupid like this, Mr. Dillon? Trying to form a mob to take his brother out of the jailhouse. Well, it works sometimes, Chester. Not in Dodge, it don't. Oh, well, not so far, anyway. Uh, here's the Oliver Ganza. Now, don't get in the way. Huh? No, sir. I've just been talking, Marshal. No harm in talking, is there? Well, Lee's innocent anyway. He shouldn't be in jail. And, and, and I'm going to get him out, too. These men here are all with me. And we're going... Hey, 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 hey. Quiet. Shut up! Bartender, this place is closed for the rest of the day. No more liquor. And you men get out of here and don't let me find any of you together again, not for a long time. Now get moving. Oh, here, Chester. I'll pay for the beer. You leaving, Mr. Dillon? Oh, Kitty just came downstairs. I haven't seen her yet. I think I'll go over and say hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, like for me to go across the street and see if they're keeping the Alifaganza closed? No, that's all right. <coughs> I told them they could open up again tonight. Oh, oh. Well, thanks for the beer, Mr. Dillon. Sure, Chester. Sure. Welcome to Dodge, stranger. How are you, Kitty? Fine. I'd be even better if you'd brought two beers over instead of one. Uh-huh. But you can sit down anyway. <laughs> well, you can take this one, Kitty. It's kind of warm. I don't want it. Matt, do you suppose the day will ever come when having good manners will be a requirement for the marshals of? <laughs> well, if it ever does, Kitty, I don't guess they'll need marshals anymore. Yeah, maybe you're right at that. Well, how have you been, huh? Everything okay? Well, I was making out pretty good, Matt, till I broke my toe. Broke your toe? Yep. <laughs> How'd you do that? In the line of duty, right here in the saloon. I got tromped on, dancing with a Texas cowboy. He should have been spending his trail money on red silk handkerchiefs and soda water instead of me. He couldn't have been over 16. Darn fool, kid. There's not much you can do for a broken toe, is it? No. At least it doesn't hurt when I'm sitting down. I uh, hear you broke up Dolph Trumbo's party at the Alifaganza this afternoon. Oh? Huh? You hear just about everything, don't you, Kitty? Men. They talk more than women. <laughs> this place is full of men, day and night. You think if I closed my eyes and prayed real hard, they'd all go away? Well, if they did, what would you do for a living? That'll keep me awake. <laughs> Say, there's your friend Dolph now. Just came in. Huh? There's a stranger with him, Matt. Well, I'll be. What's the matter? Who is he? He's a gunman, Kitty. That's so? Yeah. I guess he's about the handiest man with a gun that ever hit Dodge. So Dolph's gone and hired him a gunman. Who is he, anyway? What's his name? He's a friend of mine, Kitty. A friend of yours? Yeah, a good friend. He saved my life once. But now I guess he's going to try to get it back. His name's Prine. Hack Prine. <laughs> The government never did pay me much for enforcing the law in Dodge, but even if they doubled it, there were times when I'd like to acquit. I sat there with Kitty and watched the two men at the bar. They had a drink, then they shook hands, and then Hack walked out. I got up, and I followed him. Follow 
and me, Matt? Yeah, Hack. What for? Where are you staying? Dodge house. Huh? I've got a room. I, uh... I'd like to talk to you. Street will do. Okay. Dolph was trying to form a mob this afternoon, Hack. He wanted to raid his brother out of jail. I heard about it. When I went to break it up, I heard him saying they'd be led by one of the best gunmen in the country. Now, that wouldn't be Dolph himself. No. He's afraid of guns. He, uh... He meant you. Didn't he, Hack? I hadn't talked to him yet. He was just guessing I'd come in. And you have? Not with no mob. I told him that. I don't work with mobs. You should have known better than to say that. Well, how do you work, Hack? Alone, by myself. I'm a pretty good gunman, Matt. Yeah, yeah, I know. It saved my life once, sure, being a good gunman. Yeah. Matt, turn his brother loose. I get paid if you do. Look, Hack, Lee Trumbo murdered a man. He's going to stand trial for it. I don't get paid if he stands trial. But you get paid for shooting me? That's what Dolph said. That was his deal. Well? Well, they tell me you're better with a gun you used to be, Matt. Hack, I don't want to fight you. Afraid, Matt? How'd you get to be marshal, anyways? It's a job. I took it. Well, I've been offered a job, too, and I took it. Yeah, but you had better jobs, Hack. Well, it's been bothering me some, Matt. I took an awful chance saving your life once. Now I got to take another to kill you. That don't make much sense, does it? Look, Hack, why don't you forget it, huh? Go on back to Wagon Bed Springs. I'll lend you some money to see you through. No, home. it ain't that easy, Matt. I back out on this, the word will get around. Nobody will hire me for nothing no more. My reputation won't be worth crow bait. Did Billy the Kid pay you to kill men? Of course not. Of course not. That was for pleasure. You know how I hate John Chisholm. And you come down a long way, Heck. Selling your gun. I killed a man for pay over to La Hunt. It didn't bother me none. Who was he? I don't know. Some gambler. Pretty good gunman, though. Tell me something, Hack. Did Dolph say how his brother murdered that man here? Dolph claims he didn't do it at all. Well, there were two witnesses who saw him do it. The man was a buffalo skinner, unarmed. He didn't even have a knife on him. But he refused to buy Lee Trumbo a drink, so Lee shot him. Unarmed? That's right. Shot an unarmed man? You think it over, Hack. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. A man like Hack Prine had his own peculiar sense of honor. The idea of shooting me seemed to bother him less than the fact that Lee Trumbull would kill an unarmed man. Later that night, I heard he'd been seen having an argument with Dolph. So I figured I'd won. But another killing in Dodge, either me or Hack, had been avoided. Until early next morning, word came that a man had been shot at the Dodge house. I sent Chester on over while I went up and got Doc Adams. Mm, how do you know the man isn't already dead, Matt? I don't know, Doc. Well, it doesn't matter. I'd probably make more money off of him dead than alive. Oh? Well, I get paid for autopsies, don't I? Sure. Yeah, but just try to collect for the ones I keep alive. <laughs> Just you try it. And I'm glad I don't have to, Doc, but I still notice you buy a new buggy every spring. Oh, yes, and wear it out before. Racing across the prairie, delivering babies, setting bones, digging out bullets, delivering babies. Well, exercise keeps a man young, Doc. That's a good thing I don't depend on sympathy to keep me young. Ah, here we are. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, I... Oh, hello, Doc. Where is he, Chester? In that room right there, number 12. And you know who it is? It's Ole. Ole? Yes, sir. Ole. And Hack Prine shot him. What? It's Hack's room, Mr. Dillon. He did it all right. Well, let's take a look. 
Where's Hack now, Chester? I don't know, sir. Nobody's seen him for the past hour. I kept everybody out of the room, Mr. Dillon. All right, now stand aside here, boys. Let the marshal and doc through. Come on now, fellas, let them. Let me through. Let me through here. It's Ole, all right. He's dead, Matt. Real dead. Three, four hours, probably. Nobody heard a shot or nothing, Mr. Dillon. But when the clerk come on duty about an hour ago, he saw Hack Prine walk out of here. Why anybody want to kill poor little Ole, I, I do not understand. I'll bet I know, Mr. Dillon. What, Chester? You didn't talk Hack out of trying to kill you after all. He went back to Dolph last night and told him he'd take the job. Then he figured the only way to get you into a fight was to shoot somebody so you'd have to come after him. Yeah, maybe. Now, come on, let's start looking for him. Return for the last act of gun smoke in just a moment. What a pair. Les Paul and Mary Ford, America's most popular recording duo. You ought to know, you buy millions of their records. Les and Mary say, Chesterfield's for me. I guess you could call us a real Chesterfield family. I've been enjoying them now for over six years. It's over 15 years for me. We believe it's the best cigarette ever made. Yes, they have just that refreshing taste and mildness that we like. What a pair. Chesterfield king size, now at the new low price, and Chesterfield regular. America's most popular two-way cigarette. I guess the Alapraganza is the only place we haven't looked in, Mr. Dillon. He's got to be there, unless maybe he's going to try to bushwhack you. Hack may be a paid killer, Chester, but he always faces man head on. Yes, sir. That come right from the Alapraganza. Yeah. Mr. Dillon, there's Hack. He's coming out. Yeah. All right, get off the street, Chester. Yes, sir. Morning, Matt. Hello, Hack. Just killed a man in that saloon there. Dolph Trumbo? I killed him. I gave him a chance, but he wouldn't draw. I killed him anyways. That's too bad, Hack. Ain't no man gonna frame me. I never thought you killed Ole, but I wanted to hear you say so. How'd you know I didn't do it? Well, it wouldn't be your style to kill a defenseless little fellow like that, would it? Of course not. So while you were out gambling last night, Dolph killed him and dumped him in your room. I found him there, and then I went after Dolph. Ain't no man can do that to me. Hack, according to the law, you murdered Dolph. I'm going to have to arrest you. What? You're going to have to stand trial for it. Oh, no, man. No, sir, I ain't going to jail. Not me, Matt. Never. I'm a lawman, Hack. I got to arrest you. Matt, I told Dolph last night I wasn't going to take his job. I told him I was going to leave town. You're under arrest, Hack. All right. I guess you've got to do it. Let's go for it, Matt. No, Hack, no. Let's see what happens. (laughs) 
Hack. Hack. Oh, you... You're sure good, Matt. You're awful good. Yeah. Better this way, Matt. Than getting paid to fight you. Sure. Sure it is. There weren't no reason to, to fight you. Not that way. I can't see you no more, Matt. It's like like being underwater. I can't see nothing. Uh Mr. Dillon, that was awful good shooting. I never seen nothing as fast as that in my whole life. My, I'll bet he didn't know what hit him. The way he spun around there when, when you... Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, what's the matter? Mr. Dillon? My. Here is our star, William Conrad. Right now, I'd like to step out of my character as Marshal Matt Dillon to join George Fenneman as a Chesterfield salesman. You know, about the greatest compliment I've ever heard about any product is what smokers say about Chesterfield. They satisfy. So whether you smoke a regular or a king-size cigarette, Chesterfield is best. We hope you'll try them, and soon. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, John Daner, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gun smoke. Today, L and M filters have a nationwide demand never before equaled by any other cigarette in so short a time. The reason? This is it. It's the filter that counts, and L and M has the best. L and M's exclusive miracle tip contains alpha cellulose to give you effective filtration. Two other things are important. L and M's have much more flavor, much less nicotine. Buy America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Light and mild L and M. Sure to listen to Dragnet, the story of your police force in action, tomorrow night, Tuesday, on another network. Next week at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another story of the Old West on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.